In this episode, I'm here with KK Hart, Joy Keller, and Alex Nicholas, three amazing professionals that have developed expertise in the PR game. At the 2017 Mind Body Bold Conference, they participated in a great panel discussion, and we're gonna share a lot of what they discussed in that panel with you guys in this episode. It was just too good to leave it at the conference, so we've lined up some incredible questions that are going to help you guys really understand what PR is, why the best in the world are using it, and what are some strategies that you can start doing today to be able to boost your PR level. Growing a small business isn't easy, and to be successful, we know three things for sure. You have to work hard, you have to be bold, and you must constantly learn. We're gathering some of the best minds in the business world to share their ideas and strategies with you so you can grow your business easier, be more profitable, and have a lot more fun being a business owner. We're on a mission to connect the world of wellness, and this is the Mind Body Bold Show. Welcome to the Bold Show. Are you guys ready to be bold? Yes. All right, awesome. So I got some great questions. First, first one, just to kick things off, for for anybody that's a little bit cloudy on the definition, um, describe PR. Like, what is PR in its truest definition? Uh, to me, PR is the original social media, okay. and it's what runs the world. And it's uh, any business owner has to have PR to get the word out. Otherwise, why does the business exist? Give me some examples of PR. Well, I like to believe, as a local business owner and as a mind body coach, a lot of this is about local and national PR. If you're listening to this podcast and maybe you own a small business in a local town, it may not be that you need to pitch a large entity or a national um, entity, mm -hmm. but instead um, honing your local um, calendars for mm -hmm. the weekly magazines and the weekly newspapers, uh, bloggers, people who are influential in your hometown. There's okay. something called the micro-influencer that's come out. And so understanding the people in your local market who are out there and sharing the word, that's the PR that's really impertinent to you. Okay, and Alex, you've done a great job with PR as well. So why don't you tell me a little bit about some of the PR strategies that you've used that you thought really helped your business, and in particular, the ones that you just started with, right, before you were like as experienced as you are today. Yeah, absolutely. So I've really taken an unconventional approach to okay. PR and um, really didn't have much luck at all with your standard press release and the cookie cutter way it goes out. And back in 2012, when we founded Epic Hybrid Training, um, it just wasn't working for us. So I started to get creative um, and for our biggest PR that we had at the time, it was uh, an assistant producer at the Today Show, tracked down, an, uh, tracked down an email, I knew they lived in the area, got them to take a class, they loved it. You know, in a one week period, we had 10 members in my first month and all of a sudden we have a national spot on the Today Show. And honestly, the steam, the, 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 the butterfly effect from there was just astounding. And we really, really got out there and you know, blew up from there. A lot of people have a hard time really understanding the difference between PR and advertising. So when we run PR campaigns, what's the ultimate goal? What do we want people to feel or think about our brand when we're executing PR strategies? Because advertising isn't so much about a feeling, is it? Yeah, I talk a lot about this as a business coach. PR is your own way to own your voice and your brand. It's the only media that we can do that with in the world of online reviews and hearing what people say about your business. This is the one time you can promote what you want to promote and own your message. Mm -hmm. And you guys all know Bill Gates. I think everyone pretty much knows Bill Gates. Pretty rich, I think he's doing well. He has uh, obviously a lot of uh, opportunity to do any type of advertising, any type of PR that he wants, but he's, he's got a very famous phrase that I know PR professionals love, which is, if I was down to my last dollar, I'd spend it on PR. So why do you think the top of the top think that way? Let's, let's strip it down to what we were just talking about with PR. It's public relations. Right. It's how you relate with the public, period. Any which way you can possibly do so. So it's so important that you are playing to your strengths. If your strengths are social media, so be it. Go after it that way. If your strengths are traditional PR and you have success with that, you should be going about it that way. But, I mean, back to that question, it's so important because if you're not attracting the public, what do you have? Right, you, know, right. you don't have a membership base. You don't have anybody acknowledging that you're even an establishment or a business. So you know, that's why I think that that quote is so important and, and you know, comes from such an so important person. I want you guys to, for a second, imagine that you just started a small service-based business, right? From scratch, zero funds, right? And, and, and whatever funds you have, like that's enough to do maybe one thing in PR, okay? 
And let's call it a fitness studio, but make it so that it could work for some other massage, stuff like that as well, right? So I say, hey, look, you can grow your business, but you can only do it through PR. You can't run Facebook ads and stuff like that for like offers. So you can only do PR. And uh, I want you to pick one thing that you guys can use to compete against each other for you guys to have a more successful business by the end of the year. So what would be the PR strategy you'd start with? Well, I'll go back to being a business coach again. I'm all about doing things that help you with the return on effort. Okay. So I'm going to tell you something that's free 99, absolutely free. Okay. Free okay. 99. Um, and that is help a reporter out.com or .net. Um, it's an amazing resource because you don't have to come up with a story idea. Okay. You are going to find PR professionals, writers, um, large national entities and local entities that are looking for stories that you can choose that your relevance so that you can kind of make that inroad by making sure the story is already out there. You're just providing yourself as the expert okay. and it takes very little effort to do. You can sign up for emails. They come multiple times in a day. Mm -hmm. You can have an assistant or an intern sort through them, look for certain keywords that are relevant to your business, yoga, martial arts, salon, spa, and then discern, do I have something that's uh, discernible, something that's important, that's um, actionable that I can do to help this PR professional to get their story out there? And of course, the intended benefit is also for your business. So now what the most, the best guys like you um, do in PR is you don't just say, okay, this is a strategy. I'm going to get in this magazine and that's it. You know how to get more activity from that one effort, how to leverage that one piece of content in multiple ways. So let's say I got in a really great magazine. How can I use that feature in order to attract more people? Where, where else can I show people that I've been featured here? Well, I think it's important that you, you take that media and you blast it out on via, via, via social media, okay. email blast, everything possible. It's a copycat culture okay. in the media. And you know, if it's an interesting story, somebody else is gonna wanna do a follow up or they might wanna do a similar story. Okay. So it's so important to get that message out to the public, all right, that hey, this is what we're about. This is, we just got a, you know, some national media, or even if it's a local, let everybody know about it. Mm -hmm. you, know, and you never know who's gonna come back with a follow up question or a journalist that's excited about that story and is gonna build off of it. You know, one of my good friends has this awesome strategy that works great where he actually will get featured or he'll get somebody featured and then he'll run ads to people that work at other competing magazines and that works incredibly well he actually gets strategic comments from them. yeah so just remember guys you can put these features in front of other people that you may want to get featured in in order to when you reach out to them there's familiarity that exists and now it's not so much of a cold pitch because how many cold pitches do these you know, publicists get on a daily basis? How many emails do they get from people saying, hey, I got a great story for you to pitch? Way too many. <laughs> yeah, so how do you stand out? How does your email or your phone call or whatever outlet you use, how do you stand out from the others? What do you guys do to reach out and connect with that journalist? Well, I'll give you my own best practice. Um, I'm a local business owner and I'm a PR personality. And of course, I also help people to do this. Mm -hmm. Email marketing, just that basic concept, is one of the best things that you can use to pitch a PR professional. For instance, sometimes your pitch doesn't even make it to the open. So you've gotta make sure that your most relevant, interesting sound bites, content, and story idea is in your subject headline. That's gonna help you to get someone to open the email to find the relevance in your story and how they can use it. That's the very first can step. Can any of you guys give me an example of a really good headline, like a subject line? Anything that you could think of for anything that you've done in the past, maybe? I can tell you how I create one. Yeah, that's I often watch the media that I want to be on and okay. I create sound bites based on what they're using as they're coming up next. And okay. that gets their attention because I'm speaking in their language. Got it. Okay. I'm a big, big believer in get creative. All right. You know, get get crazy basically. Get unconventional and get crazy. So if a journalist is on, you know, maybe they're communicating via Twitter a lot, you know, get on their Twitter feed. All right. Okay. Maybe they're big on, um, you know, maybe they're big on email. Use an email, you know. But find the way that they're communi communicating most with the general public. If it's Instagram, if it's social media, if it's something else. If they have a phone number that's listed, call them. Right. So you know, don't be afraid. I think so many people are just don't have the confidence to be unconventional with the way that they reach um, the media and journalists. And don't be afraid if you get shot down. It's okay. Yeah. You know, come up with a new pitch. Come up with a new idea. But the three things that every studio owner or, or fitness professional or any professional should have um, are an interesting story, something that's relevant, all right, and a creative pitch. I want to dig into that for a minute because the person that's watching says, okay, I'm going to start this PR stuff. I've never done it before, I'm going to start it. 10 attempts, 10 emails. How many failures is okay for him to be like, this is normal? 
out of 10? Yeah. Sometimes it's 10. Yeah. I mean, that's and not even a big enough going. number. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and if you get zero, you keep going. But start trying other ways also. Maybe right. email's not your thing. Like, I'm not great at writing emails. But I'm pretty good at, at, at you know, writing social media um, blasts at personal people and, and, and journalists and getting their attention and saying, hey, I, I read your article. I thought it was awesome. You know, our studio is featuring this. So it's like you're giving the journalist some props, right. right? They're pumped about that, all right? And then all of a sudden you're giving them more to the story that they're already interested in because they already read an article on it. Right. So now they can write a follow-up article and then they're excited that they're getting feedback that they did something right. That's awesome. And it does work. Yeah. Yeah, and you think I like to use the KISS principle, keep it simple. Stupid. Stupid. You can say stupid yeah, sure. just keep it simple. <laughs> okay, so I have a question for you then, Joy. So once you, let's say, get this relationship done, they're like, yeah, let's go ahead. We'd love to run your story. Would you start pitching follow up stories right there and then? Would you wait for it to release? Like, how would you um, nurture that relationship to be able to keep getting more opportunities within that same one journalist? I would ask them if they're open to hearing more pitches yeah. immediately. Or if it was, uh, if I had additional ideas that were um, natural segues to the original one, I would probably pitch them three, but I wouldn't pitch more than three. Okay. Now, you say 10 out of 10 failures can be normal, and yeah. you gotta keep pushing through. And obviously, as you start becoming more familiar to a lot of these journalists, you get less failures, because they know you, they trust you a little bit more, they've maybe worked with you in the past, or they've seen your work in the past. So eventually you get there, but some people quit early, and uh, sometimes they feel like they may have even been burnt by a PR experience, whether it was they hired a company or they went to do it themselves and they went 0 for 10, right? Yeah. So how do they know when it's time to start up again? I'll tell you as a business coach, again, it goes back to return on investment and return on effort. It may be that you have to think first about your goals. Mm -hmm. You know, is getting your brand out there the best thing for you? And define what out there means. Is it your local community? Is it a national reach? So it's almost going back to basics to really understand, you know, what's going to get me the biggest bang for my buck? Because um, I'm a local business owner and I know how that is. Mm -hmm. Every dollar matters. Right. And so that dollar needs to work for you like Bill Gates, 20 fold. And so thinking about the strategy that you have first is really deciding that answer to that question, which is, is it time now? Is it gonna reach my goals? Or is it just a feel good? And understanding what each of those will mean for your business. And when you have a business that we do everything for everybody, right? That may actually be the case. But when pitching PR, is it easier to have like a focus, whether it's on, hey, for new moms or for pregnant women or for dads on Father's Day, or is there, do you guys recommend like getting a focus for your PR pitches or do you recommend just saying what you normally say every time you open your door? Relevance is key. Focus, it's, yeah. It, yeah, relevance and focus is key. You, you really need to have a concise message and hopefully it has something to do with what's going on with that media outlet okay. and what they're covering. And, and it also has to be relevant for what you're pitching. So it's kind of you know, hand in hand, both things have to happen at the same time. That will give you your best chance at being successful with media. So I'm, I'm gonna ask all of you the same question. I'll start with you, uh, Alex. Uh, <laughs> with, with all the stuff that you guys have done, whether for yourself or for clients, uh, or even just friends of yours you've seen do stuff, right? What's been the, the most powerful PR strategy you've executed or seen executed that you go, man, that was pretty cool, and it worked really well. I think something that, that we have done is I challenge you know, all of my coaches and employees, right? They're branding themselves all the time via social media, right? How do I get them to also be cognizant of our studio, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a double pitch, and it's like, all right, let's make it a game now. Let's, you know, a lot of people don't like to do PR, and they don't like the whole media or social media. Well, make it fun, okay. you know, make it a game. Provide some incentives. If one of your coaches or one of your employees loves it, well, let them run with it, you know? Tell them to write a pitch. Tell them, you know, oh, you, you read Shape Magazine? Oh, great, you know, let's, let's hashtag, you know, what we're looking to feature and hit up that journalist. So oh. get everybody involved. That's pretty cool. And, and the more they do it, the better they get at it. And when they win, it's exciting and they keep doing it. And also when they win, it probably lets the other employees feel that feeling of, okay, it can be done. Exactly. That's pretty cool. Smart. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, I, I know of someone who, a personal trainer who had a client who uh, was Ladanian. Ladanian Thomas? <laughs> yes, thank you. Before he was. <laughs> okay. And we ran an article on that, or someone ran an article on that. And other athletes became interested. And the next thing you know, the guy is world famous. Wow. Yeah. Mine is very short and sweet. Don't be afraid to be a do-it-yourselfer. I'm right. proof that you don't have to have a PR professional. You don't have to have someone to do this for you. You can learn all of the tools and tactics that we've learned through self-study and really go out there and make a difference for your own PR. 
Um, do you think PR is necessary to be successful? 100%. Yeah? In one way or another. If you were to go back in time to yourself when you first started your business, what advice would you give in regards to PR? Would you say, hey, don't worry about that yet. Let's get this out of the way. Or would you say, dude, we got to start this right away? Uh, get a handle on it. Yeah, more target marketing also. Like figure out what your, your message is. I didn't exactly know what my message was. I got, um, you know, I think I was fortunate in a lot of my cases at the start where a lot of people aren't. It's like have that message and target market. Okay. So go after, you know, if you're a, a martial arts studio um, and, you know, you don't want to be, really be maybe targeting yogis who don't want to have any, any contact, you know, okay. figure out where you're going to go with that marketing and make sure it's targeted correctly. I agree. I would say people always say, know thyself, know thy brand, mm -hmm. know what's going to be best for you. That's awesome. Um, last question for all of you. Um, if let's say somebody's just starting out and they want to start learning the basics, the fundamentals, you guys were at that point one day, right? What are some books that maybe you'd recommend or podcasts that you recommend or courses or blogs that you guys would recommend for that person to kind of get their feet wet there before really start playing big? I like Barbell Business. It's a, it's a, I find it to be um, interesting. I don't always agree with their points, but I, I like that they're always thinking and they're creative. So there's, there's little bits and pieces. And that's a podcast. It's a podcast, yep. yes. There's little bits and pieces that I've found off of that that I thought are, that are great and doesn't always necessarily fit what my opinion or my alignment with how to get into PR is, but you know, maybe down the road it will. Okay. So that's something where I found some, some things that I've been able to incorporate. Great. The title and author escapes me at the moment, but any book that is related to experience economy, okay. because this is really about um, experience and relationships. And if you don't have a, a customer experience to um, share, then um, the PR efforts will, be, will probably fall flat. Right, right. So, so being able to use your actual customer experiences, learning how to do that more? Leverage it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. I have a little bit more of a structured approach. I actually work with AFA and NASM, two of the governing bodies on helping you to get your certification. We created a CEO course so you can get your CEUs done, which we all need to do as fitness professionals, sure. and teach yourself this from nuts to bolts. Okay, great. And is there a site for that? Yeah, you can see it on my site, kkheart.com. Awesome. And can you guys share the sites too if people want to learn a little bit more about you? Joy? Sure. Go to ideafit.com. Great. Sure, go to, it's, uh, I'm the owner and founder of Epic Hybrid Training, and it's epichybridtraining.com. Guys, these people here, these awesome people, are great at what they do. And they were asked to speak on a huge stage here at the main conference for MindBody because of that. And so I hope you really appreciate this and understand how important PR is based on what you're hearing. And um, if you have any questions, go check them out, see what they're doing. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for everything you Our shared pleasure. today and at the conference. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you like this episode, then subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher, and to our YouTube channel to never miss an episode. You can get all the links by going to boldshow.com. Thanks, and see you next time.